To me, the Washington Redskins never really had a very good vibe about them for the 2017 season. When you look at how 2016 finished, that embarrassing Week 17 loss to the Giants, who had already clinched a playoff spot, all the Redskins had to do against a team, divisional rival or not, that was really playing for absolutely nothing, was win and you're in the playoffs. Win and you're in. That's it. And as we all know, they didn't get the job done. So coming off of that kind of demoralizing, embarrassing loss in Week 17 at the end of last season, then you partner that with the departures of Deshaun Jackson, Pierre Garçon via free agency, the mess that still was and still is the Kirk Cousins contract situation. Then when you throw in all of the saga of the offseason that headed into the season, with Sua Cravens, and is he retired? Does he want to play football? Does he not want to play football? What the hell is going on here? It's easy to understand why there wasn't a lot of buzz, even for the most ardent of Redskin fans here where I live in Virginia. Um, but I will say this, is that when you look at this team, they did not have a lot of potential heading into the year. They just didn't. They had so many questions. Sure, you could say you bring in Terrell Pryor via free agency. Obviously, that didn't work out, but even if it did, you, know, you hadn't gotten anything out of Josh Doxson, your first-round pick from 2016 in his rookie season. How much were you going to get out of him in 2017? The answer, a little bit, but not a lot. Um, it just didn't feel like the same team. So their potential was, to me, very limited. This was never going to be a playoff team no matter what happened. But they weren't terrible. They weren't very good, but they weren't terrible. As you would even note by the fact that after eight games, they were sitting at four and four, including some quality road wins that first half of the season against the Rams in week two, and then later on against the Seahawks, a game probably nobody gave them any business uh, going in there and winning. They did. So you're sitting at four and four, at least in the mix at least in the mix. But then what happened for the Redskins in just this, what ended up being a lost season was injuries to the offensive line were devastating. And if that's not devastating, you had other places where injuries caught up with them. First round pick Jonathan Allen ended up missing a good portion of the season. Jordan Reed, hey, the six games he plays, he's not bad, but the rest of them, he ain't in there. Ah, ah. The NFC's equivalent of a smaller Tyler Eifert. He's just never on the damn field. Like I said, the aforementioned Terrell Pryor was a bust. They really didn't get a lot consistently out of the ground game. When they did get a big spark out of Chris Thompson, who was really doing some good things the first half of the season, of course, as was so fitting for the Redskins in 2017, he got hurt and missed most of the rest of the season. So it's not a surprise that they ended up 1-5 in the NFC East. They finished 3-5 the second half of the season and ended up at 7-9. And that's exactly who they were. The ironic thing to me is, is when you look at the Redskins in 2017, they always were going to be something like maybe a seven-win team. Maybe eight, maybe six. But I didn't ever, I don't think I could recall ever really looking at them and feeling like they were a playoff team. If I recall correctly, I picked them to finish last in the division. So they ended up being exactly who I thought they were going to be. And... I actually think Jay Gruden did a really good job with this team. Considering the loss of the weapons on the outside, considering the lack of a running game, considering distractions and situations like what happened with Sua Cravens, losing your first round pick Jonathan Allen, all the injuries on the offensive line. The fact that this team went 7-9 and nine is a borderline miracle. And when you want to talk about making the playoffs being the measure of a coach or just missing the playoffs in week 17 is a measure of a coach. To me, 2017 was a measure of Jay Gruden and his pure coaching abilities, and they weren't bad. He put a lot of other coaches, even some big name, really, really good top-notch guys into this situation, and they're not really doing better than seven and nine. So at least you could say this, is that Jay Gruden is getting the chance to come back in 2018, even though the team hasn't made the playoffs the past two seasons, and that's exactly the way it should be. 
I will. At least, I, I almost threw up on my mouth about to say this, but you have to give Daniel Snyder and Bruce Allen credit. You really don't want to, especially if you're a Redskins fan. Before the fact that they're not bailing on Jay Gruden and going out there and trying to make some big dumb dick splashy hire at the position, because a decade ago they would have been throwing twelve million a year at his brother John Gruden, or they would have been doing something they'd have thrown fifteen million a year at Bill Cowher, some ridiculous dumb crap like that. But they're staying the course with Jay, and that's exactly the way it should be. Because, again, with all those injuries, you lose some of the talent that you lost at the receiver position. You had Jordan Reed, another one of your big-time playmakers, hardly could stay on the field. You still struggled to run the ball. You know, what else are you going to do? What else are you going to do? You're going to finish 7-9. So now you look ahead for the Redskins into this offseason. What's it all about? They've got a little over $50 million in salary cap space. So they've got some money to spend and perhaps some money to spend in different places. They can move on from Terrell Pryor. It was the genius of giving him the one-year deal. If it works out, great. And if it doesn't, which it didn't, and he busts out, then you're only off the hook after one season and you only lost out on some money. You're not losing out on a crap ton of money. The number one thing this organization has to do is once and for all, it's either shit or get off the pot with Kirk Cousins. And at this point in time, I don't know if they still hold the stigma against him of being a former fourth round pick and they still hold it against him that he ended up winning that job away from RG Nee. They're pissed off that RG Nee and all that they gave up for him was a total waste. I don't know what it is. And I realize that when you look at a Kirk Cousins getting ready to be, what, about 30 years of age, he's got six years in the league, you don't look at him and you don't see superstar. You don't look at him and you don't see an elite quarterback. You wonder if you necessarily even see a franchise quarterback. What I do know, though, is that Kirk Cousins is better than at least half the quarterbacks in the league. And I know, considering the circumstances that he was placed into this year, he had his moments where he wasn't great, but he had some other pretty good moments, which unfortunately sometimes is kind of a Kirk Cousins calling card. He'll have some really good moments, some really good games, and then others, eh, not so much, and others you just want to uh, cover your eyes, run away, and hide. But what's the end game here for the Redskins? You've been drawing this out and drawing this out, and at some point in time, and this is the time, even if you want to get into the whole semantics of the transition tag and paying this guy 28 whatever the hell, $30 million for another one-year deal effectively in 2018, at some point in time you have to make a commitment to the guy or you need to move the hell on from a guy. Because I don't know what Kirk Cousins could do at this point to give this organization any indication that he's worth big-time franchise quarterback money. And if you're the Redskins, do you think drafting a guy is automatically going to be the answer because the real truth of the matter is is more first round quarterbacks bust out than they do ball out and that's a fact you might think that you could find a guy with higher upside than Kirk Cousins but you also might find a guy with bigger much bigger massive bust potential than Cousins I still think it's ridiculous that this organization has assigned this guy long term and it should have already been done because if they eventually do do it in this offseason, which is still a possibility, I don't know how likely it is. If it does happen, then they will have cost themselves more money long term by artificially competing against themselves by using the franchise tag two years, potentially the trans transition tag, excuse me, a third go round to where you're creating a baseline that is much higher than it would have been if you would have re-signed him two damn years ago and given him a four, five, or six year deal. Yeah, it would have been more risky back then, but you would have saved a crap ton of money. And, of course, the Redskins didn't do that. Scott McLuhan, when he was sober or when he was drunk, it didn't matter. He didn't want to commit long-term to Cousins. Bruce Allen, Daniel Snyder seemed to not want to commit to Kirk Cousins. Need, need I inform this organization? RG Nee stunk. RG Nee busted out. Let it go. Move on. He is what he is when you're talking about Cousins. But he's a lot better than some of the other team's options at the quarterback position. Do you really want to risk letting this guy go in free agency and getting nothing back for him? Or even if somebody is foolish enough to trade multiple picks to get a Kirk Cousins? 
Do you have confidence and faith that your team, your organization that just a few short years ago drafted RG Nee number two overall after giving up a shit ton to go up and get him to actually find their real guy in the fourth round will be able to effectively evaluate the quarterback position and find that guy? Like, it's all types of crazy of what could go down in Washington because if you keep Kirk Cousins around, then you're thinking about the playoffs in 2018. If you let him go or you trade him away, you're thinking about totally blowing this thing up and rebuilding it. And at that point in time, I don't know why Jay Gruden would want to stay around past 2018. It's just, just a mess, and it's typical of the Redskins. It really is. Now, looking ahead to the draft, they've got all of their picks. They're picking 13th overall in round one. What do they need? Um... If they let Kirk Cousins go, they need a quarterback, and that's need number one. Absolutely, positively need number one. And in the position that they'll be at at 13, they can probably find a guy. Will he be their guy? Will he be the right guy? I don't know. But they can get a guy there, and they need to be prepared to get a guy there based off of the way this organization is acting. But let's just say in some crazy way, they either give Kirk Cousins a long-term deal finally, or they give him the transition tag and keep him around under that in 2018. You still have a lot of holes, especially on the offensive side of the ball. You know, when you look at the Redskins 2015, 2016, there was some explosiveness to that offense. They could move the ball. They could make big plays, and you just didn't see that this past season. Number one thing they got to do, other than get healthy, especially in that offensive line, is they need a feature back. No more of the Rob Kellys, no more of the Samaji P. Ryan types, no more of the Chris Thompsons and then not playing them enough. You need a guy that could be a feature back. You need a guy that could be that dude so Chris Thompson could do the excellent things that he does in his role and the Samaji P. Ryan could be best suited to do what he does best, which is kind of be a backup type of dude, a, a body in the backfield basically. You cannot feel super confident, in my opinion, as an NFL team, if your lead running back is Samaji P. Ryan. He's an adequate back, and that's it. And the Redskins need more than an adequate back, because all it's led to for them since they let Alfred Morris go is a pretty crappy running game. They need to get that running game going again, and they must find that dude. Wherever it is in the draft, first round or seventh, doesn't matter, but they got to find that guy. Now look at the wide receiver position. I'm sure Terrell Pryor is gone. So what do you have left there? You have Josh Doxson. You have Jamison Crowder. Even if you have confidence in both of those guys, you still have to go get a wide receiver. Is that going to be round one? Is it going to be on day two? I'm not sure. But it needs to be at least one of them by day two. Because they really need help there. I also think they got to look at the tight end position. Vernon Davis has been a bit of a godsend for them. But how much longer does Vernon Davis have? And frankly, when it comes to Jordan Reed, I know you gave him a crap ton of money. But how much can you really count on that dude? And the tight end is so important to what the Redskins do on offense. They need a tight end. Really badly. Because if Davis declines and Reed, like he always does, can't play, then what the hell do you do? And then they could probably use some depth along that offensive line. But it all comes down to one thing. Kirk Cousins. Do the Redskins finally do what they should be doing and giving them a long-term deal? Are they going to try and kick the can down the road one more time and put the transition tag on them? Or are they really ready to let Kirk Cousins go and go into the abyss of the future? I don't know what the hell they're doing at this point. And I don't know if the Redskins know.